I'm Peter, and welcome to another edition of F5 Dev Central's Lightboard Lessons. A profile is the representation of something in an outline, like my head and face. A profile can also be your information or settings in a social media account, your bank ac online bank accounts, and those sorts of things. Maybe it's a dossier on an international spy. Ooh. On Big IP, profiles or profile are a set of tools you can use to manage and control your application delivery traffic on Big IP. So let's light up what are profiles and how they're used on the Big IP. So today's application delivery networking is quite complex and particularly the internet. And so we have our client out here. He's typically happy with a smiley face and such. And he's going out to the internet, terminating on a big IP, and then accessing <clears throat> some applications, web or otherwise. Now, within this particular uh, transaction, the request and response, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of services being delivered, uh, potentially a lot of protocols going back and forth. Um, you might need to, to do SSL and encrypt the connection. You might need to authenticate him on the way in. Uh, maybe you want to offload some SSL. Maybe you want to optimize the connection between the client and the applications. And so <clears throat> how do you manage all of those services and encryption and protocols and potentially even persistence? You want a sticky session between the client. So how do you handle all that on the big IP? With profiles. And so let's take a look at some of our profiles that we have. We have services profiles, and that's things like H TTP, FTP, maybe uploading files to a support site. SIP, remember when voice over IP used to like break firewalls and it was hard to get through routers and even iSessions, I oh, iSessions tunnels and optimize encrypted connection between two big IPs. We have protocol, Pro call profiles. And so this is things like TCP, UDP, uh, fast HTTP, fast layer four. And so they're protocol profiles. We also have things like um, persistence. And persistence profiles. Maybe it's cookie persistence or RDP or even just uh, source and destination address persistence. We have authentication profiles and those are things like, you know, radius, U-S, LDAP, and then a few others. And by no means is this the, the entire collection of profiles. Um, just, you know, kind of some examples of what we got going on. We have SSL profiles for client, client SSL profile and server SSL uh, profile. So we have services, protocol, persistence, auth, SSL, and they all kind of do their own um, cool things. So, how does this work? So, for instance, he's uh, just coming in straight HTTP. And anytime you set up, you know, the, the virtual servers and such, they kind of come with the default profiles. And so, for instance, you would apply your HTTP profile here to the big IP. Now, these profiles were built and um, essentially configured, built by our engineering team. They have a lot of experience in all of these 
you know, services and protocols. And so you would apply the HTTP protocol to your virtual servers to apply to the pool back here. And it's a highly optimized, all the settings are highly optimized. And so you can kind of just leave it at the default. Maybe you want fast HTTP. Maybe you need to do client and server SSL, doing SSL law flow, terminating on the big IP, and then going back to the applications. You would apply one of the SSL profiles on there. Now there's this idea that we have the default profiles, which are all of these right here. And again, there, there are many more uh, to choose from. So the default profile has all of the settings already built in, highly optimized from our engineers. So we'll just write default. But we also have custom profile. So you can take your default profile and adjust it as you see necessary for your unique environment. And voila, you have a custom profile. Maybe you wanted to tweak some of the settings in your TCP profile or tweak some of the settings in your uh, cookie persistence profile. One of the things we recommend though is do not necessarily uh, adjust, change uh, your default profile. Start with the default, start with the parent profile, make your changes and then save your custom profile without affecting uh, all of your default profiles. And one of the reasons for this is anytime there's a software update or potentially a hot fix being released and you can and you apply that to your system, the upgrade or the hot fix, sometimes within that uh, code, there would be adjustments or changes, uh, better optimization. We maybe learned something new or um, some vulnerability occurred, a risk out there. And so we might make a, an adjustment to the default profiles on the big IP during the upgrade process. And if you've saved your default, changed, this, changed your default and kept it as, or customized your default, but then left it as default, then those default profiles may be adjusted or changed, which kind of messes up whatever special settings you've done. So always make sure that, now you certainly can, um, but always make sure that you save it as a custom profile and work from there because then when there's an upgrade, the, the defaults will get upgraded, but your custom will be left alone. And the other thing uh, that's kind of cool is that there's this whole idea of one to many or many to one. So you can apply, you know, one, I'll just leave the HTTP, you can, you can apply the one profile to the big IP to handle all your traffic and all of your pools on the back end. So you just want the similar settings, the same stuff going on for everything on the back end. So the kind of one to many, you just manage that one and it deals with all of them on the back end. You can also do many to one. As I mentioned at the top, there are a lot of things that are going on. Maybe you want to terminate SSL. Maybe you have to authenticate this client. Maybe you want persistence to the back end servers. And so what you can do is you can apply your HTTP profile, you can apply your, your fast layer four, let's apply our client and server SSL profiles. We're gonna LDAP them to authenticate them on the way in and we're gonna do, I don't know, which one do we like? Any, mini, my name, oh, catch a cookie persistence. Now you can apply all of those profiles to the big IP and then have that, all those profiles applied to say a single entity, if that entity is handling all that stuff. What we see most often, right, is things like you have your HTTP profile for your regular unencrypted traffic and then an SSL profile for once you need to start encrypting the connections on the way in. And so an easy way to manage and highly optimize your application delivery traffic all on your big IP profiles. If you like this video, please subscribe to DevCentral's channel. I'm Peter, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the community.